you know, he had the same agent and uh, uh, Hogan set him up with the same agent and same lawyer that Hulk had. Uh, you know, Hulk was very good to Bill. And I think that during this time, Goldberg, I couldn't, I'm not 100% sure, but I, this is when Bill started to dabble early in some movies. And I think he went out to do some movies. And I think Hogan's agent and Hogan set him up for one. It seemed like at this point with Goldberg, it was like, okay, you know, where does he go from here? What are you going to do with him? Because he basically, you know, he beat Hogan, he beats the Giant, he has that match at, at Road Wild where it's like nine or eight, eight or nine different guys in it. It's kind of like a battle royal. He wins. But it's like, what feud are we going to establish him with? Where, where are we going with? And it almost seemed like it was going to be Chris Jericho. Yes, Jericho's a lower card guy. And, and yes, you know, obviously Goldberg would, would win that match. But how come we didn't go in that direction? Jericho continues to feud with Goldberg, but there's no Goldberg-Jericho feud per se. There was a... I'm going to go out on a limb on this. There was a problem. And Jericho, from what I've heard, wanted to get, and I think this would have been a big pop, wanted to build it up. He just didn't want to go and do the job for nothing. And Chris is a very smart guy and a fabulous worker. He was, to me, during this time, he was like the young Sammy and uh, Marx and uh, Hook and those guys from AEW, the young studs, that he knew his worth, but he was going to let Goldberg spear him out of his boots. Wouldn't that have been a must-see moment forever on YouTube? Yep. Something happened there, and, uh, you know, I think Bill, I love Bill, but I think sometimes when you get that quick push, and I don't think anybody ever got the push that Goldberg got in the wrestling business, maybe in the history of the wrestling business, right off the gate, I think he thought he should, the character and him had intertwined like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And he thought he should go through guys, no matter who they were. Jericho had worked hard to get in that spot. You know what I mean? He had busted his ass. His interviews at that time were terrific. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, he's been a great draw forever. But I think when he was Chris Jericho, the Cruiserweight champion, that was some of the most unique matches, the most unique interviews when he had the uh, ring guy come out with the T-shirt, remember? Ralphus, oh yeah. Ralphus, yeah. I mean, he, <laughs> just, he just was on the mark. Everything he was touching was turning to gold, and I don't think a lot of people understood how over he was. I mean, I think that it would have elevated Jericho if he, if we could come up with something to build that program where there was no no match, but Jericho interfered in a dressing room or, you know, where his bill's coming into a car, he stole Bill's car, or he had Ralph as he Bill's lunch or something. That when we got him in the ring and they had their match and Jericho got on him and then when Bill would spear Jericho out of his boots, we'd still be talking about it. We missed that one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, to me, it's like Jericho, he's so good at the point. Remember he was calling him Greenberg? He was saying he's 1-0, 2-0, 3-0, just making up wins against him. I mean, he was really building himself up as a big player, obviously he's not going to beat Goldberg, but it would have been fun to to see that match and, and really get invested in it. I just, I know I couldn't believe that it didn't end up happening. You know what I mean? Like it seemed like everything was leaning in that direction. Bischoff kind of blames Goldberg. Jericho kind of blames Goldberg. It seems like he just didn't want to do it for whatever reason. Did Did Eric blame Goldberg too? Yes. 
What did he say? I like the, that. The basically, voice. that Jericho wasn't on his level. He didn't like the joking around stuff that he was doing. Yeah. He didn't like the fact that that they were le- like you guys were letting him say he was four and zero against them. He didn't like the Greenberg stuff. Like it was all like detrimental stuff, like against. Um, against those two together, so it's like Goldberg was bad mouth to Jericho, and Bischoff was kind of placating Goldberg, but really saying that Goldberg didn't want to do it. How could he make him do it? Yeah, I see that as Bill had gotten so into his character, and he was so young and green, he didn't understand you had to you could work with anybody to draw money. And this wasn't just anybody. This was a guy that was a savant about wrestling. He studied it. He lived it. And he came up with some great stuff, right? Yep. Yeah, he was very, very good. I think, you know, it was just one of those things where Bill didn't understand. He was too young. But then later on, didn't he run from baby faces when he was a heel? Yep. Didn't he start talking when he couldn't talk? Yep. Yep. So, uh, yep. Wrong time. This just shows, too, that Bill was too to let him decide stuff on his own. And the thing is, maybe everybody would have done that, too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. At that time. You got to realize he had gone through the NWO. He had gone through Ming. He had gone through just about everybody. Yeah, it was like he was beating all the giants and the big guys. But the Goldberg-Jericho feud would have been a lot of fun. Like, I he... like. Bischoff even said, like, oh. he he almost didn't understand what Jericho was doing and being a heel and, and egging him on and getting heat. It was almost like Goldberg didn't understand what, what was going on. He was so green to the business. I think uh, Eric is 100% right. I don't think Bill understood. Uh, he, Bill took everything really serious. He did understand he was given a position to lead the company and he took that very very serious and I think he was too young to understand that he could have drawn a lot of money with Jericho could you imagine if Jericho got in the ring and jumped on him and Ralphus was in the ring and Bill went to spear Jericho and Jericho pulled Ralphus in front of him and Bill speared Ralphus yep then Jericho could say, oh, you won another one, Bill. You know, you beat Ralphus. I mean, the guy was super entertaining. We made, we, you know, we, it, you know, that's one thing you learn that you can't go back and redo it because once it's gone, it's gone. Man, because they tried to do it when he was in WWF, and it was okay, Jericho versus Goldberg, but it was almost like, man, there was so much momentum because Jericho's getting so much heat for calling him Greenberg, having the fake Goldbergs come out, beating him by count out when he wasn't in the building, like all this great stuff, and he was building it up. I know he he speared him once on, on the entrance way and beat him up. It's like, yeah. man, he should have speared him in the ring and beat him one, two, three, and they could have had a match, and he could have been you know the biggest spear ever, whatever, but Goldberg wouldn't do it. It was crazy. And I don't know how that happened on the uh, the spear on the floor on the entranceway. That never should have been done. It's like you said. I could, you know, if we had kept them away and not, and you have to deal with Bill being green and not really knowing, we could have done it and sat down and explained it to Bill. But it, took, it takes so much time to do that that we lost the momentum with Jericho, us, because Jericho knew where he was going. Yeah. Yeah. No way to talk Goldberg into it, I guess? I don't, I mean, I think that, I mean, this is a long time. 
I think we got to a point where he said he just doesn't understand. And if we do, uh, and I'm sure this was Eric's thinking too, because that's why I asked you what he thought. You know, if we put him out there, it may be a debacle. It may, Billy may, you know, Jericho's a great worker. He may have worked Bill's socks off of him. Do you know what I'm saying? Yep. And exposed Bill. There was so much riding on that. I think, you know, uh, we decided to not put the resistance up we should have put. Does that make sense? Yep. It would have just, for me, would have been great just to see because, like, wow, Jericho in the world title picture. This is awesome because he was doing so much great work with the Cruiserweight division and everything else. He was on such fire, and that kind of led to him having a lot of, you know, displeasure with WCW. Like, man, I'm never going to break this glass ceiling here. I'm never going to get pushed. Not even Goldberg will work with me. And I agreed to lose a squash match to him. He won't work with me. So it probably led to Jericho wanting to leave eventually. I'm sure. And the other thing is, uh, do you remember when uh... – Brian Pillman did the book man and the crazy, the crazy man when he was the loose cannon. Yep. As soon as he got over, Hulk wanted to work with him. You, you know about that, right? Yep. I think if Billy had gone ahead and did a little program with Jericho, Hogan would want to work with him. We would have elevated Jericho immediately, immediately. And it also would have shown those other guys that the glass ceiling could be broken. But maybe you better put your thinking cap on like Jericho did. I mean, some of the things he did, and one of them is, I went back after you talked to me about Ralphus, because everything, after a while, everything does become a blur. I laughed my ass off with Jer uh, Ralphus really got into it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he just puffed out and walking beside Chris. I mean, it just worked on so many different levels. And you could see when the time came, like I said, he pulls him in front and, and Bill Spears, <laughs> Spears, Ralphus, you know, he says, oh, Bill, you've won another one. You beat Ralphus. He, uh, Ralphus was undefeated in 82 matches. I mean, I, there was so much fodder for Jericho to use. We screwed up. I screwed up. 